Hello everyone! This hour on Verbling, the next in my speaking skills series. Today's speaking skills is all about hobbies. That's right. Everything you do when you are not working. So we're gonna try to see what you know first about hobbies, different kinds of activities, what people do, what they collect, what they play, many other things. And then we're going to learn something new, go beyond those words, and then we'll put it all into practice in a speaking activity at the end. Now, while we're waiting for people to come in, let me do a quick introduction, get my name on the board. I'm John Eric. Oh, let me get this on the board for you. I'm John Eric, your verbling teacher for this hour. I'm an American teacher from New York. Coming at you today from Lisbon, Portugal, to bring you this class. And by the way, if you click on this link, I'm going to put for you in the chat window there. You can follow me and see all my upcoming group classes. I've taught over a thousand classes on Verblin since joining in February 2013. But over the last 15 years, I've taught general English to scenes and adults, business English at major multinational companies, academic exam courses like the TOEFL, the IELTS, and others. So click on that link to follow me and see all my upcoming classes, but also book a tutoring session so that you can see what a custom tailored lesson or package of lessons is like. Don't forget, there's a special promotion, and I think today is the last day the April showers offer. So we're offering uh, extra one extra tutoring session if you use the coupon, the one that you received in your email earlier this week. I think it's April showers and you put it in the coupon box. There's a little box when you go to book the classes. Um, okay, that's a bit about me. Let me give you the link if you don't have it. And we will say hello to everyone and get started. So first, I'll put this on the screen in the chat window. And let's see if everyone is ready to begin. There is the link to the material. And here, you should be able to see it on the screen. One second. Uh, it's still loading. So while we're waiting for that, let me say hello to Mr. Mikkel. Hello, Mikkel. How are you? Hello. How are you? Fine, fine. I, I'm doing well, well. Mr. Mikkel from the Basque country. Yes, of course. <laughs> I remember. Good, I good. Think, I think you have a different picture, but I still remember you because I know Mikkel. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, I changed, I changed my, my picture, yes. Yeah, you couldn't fool me. I know who you were. Uh, let's say hello to Sabrina as well. Hello, Sabrina. How are you? I'm fine. And you? Very good. Now, Sabrina, I can never forget you because of that cat. <laughs> I often put glasses on my cat as well, and he doesn't enjoy it. So I remember you. Where are you from oh. again, Sabrina? Just remind me. Brazil. Ah, from Brazil. Okay. Whereabouts in Brazil? Re are you from Rio? Are you from Sao Paulo? Are you from Bahia? I'm from, you? No, I'm from Minas, but I... Minas Gerais? Minas Gerais, yes. Uh, Belo Horizonte. Belo but Horizonte. now I live in Curitiba, south of Brazil. Curitiba. Okay, very good, very good. Nice to have you back. I will now fix that location in my mind. Curitiba. <laughs> Sabrina, cat glasses. Got it. Very good. Very good. Uh, and let's say hello to, oh, look at this. Mr. Alexi is back. Hello, Alexi. How are you? Hello. I am fine. Thank you. You are a regular on Thursdays, aren't you? Thursday is your day. I only see you on Thursdays. Uh, strange. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> I think it's always Thursday that you're here. Anyway, I'm glad you're here, Alexi. Nice to see you again. And you're from some exotic part of the former Soviet Union. You're not from Russia. You're from somewhere south 
aren't you? Remind me where you're from. Is it Kazakhstan? No. Uh, what? Remind me exactly where you're from. I can't remember now. Uh, I am from Russia, near Sochi, from Krasnodar. Ah, near Sochi. That's it, yeah. I knew yes, it was in the south. Near Sochi, yes. I knew it was somewhere near the south. Yes, I could remember exactly where. Near Sochi. Okay, thank you. Thank you for coming. Mm -hmm. And look at this. We have Mr. Lin. Hello, Mr. Lin. How are you? Hello, teacher. Uh, I'm great. Thank you for asking. How are you? I could not be better, Mr. Lin. And let me see. You're from Vietnam? Uh, exactly. Uh, exactly. I know because there's too many accents on your name. Whenever there's oh. lots of little marks, they must be from Vietnam. Nice to oh. have you, Mr. Lin. Thank you. And there would be no class complete without the esteemed Dr. Shinyue. Hi, teacher. Everybody, I'm back. <laughs> and how was the river today? Good? I just uh, came back from a river. I know. <laughs> because you're always at the river before the class. And were there fish today? Hmm. It's very really happy for the day. I have caught a fish. Very Maybe good. Maybe after this class, I would uh, cook uh, a dish using this fish. Oh, if only you could share it with all of us. <laughs> and did you, <laughs> did you catch it with your bare hands? Did you jump in the river and grab the fish? Or were you fishing? Uh, uh, I catch a fish using a stick. Using a stick? Oh, okay. Yes, yes. Uh, the, the water is very shallow. Uh, a lot of uh, fish uh, are swimming there. I, I suddenly hit uh, one of fish using this stick. <laughs> You've got to show us the technique. The stick mm. fishers, the famous Chinese stick fishers, is a lost art. Excellent, Mr. Shinibai. Excellent. Uh, and who else do we have here? We've got Mr. Jose. Nice to have you back, Jose. Hello, Jan. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. And Mr. Min. Hello, Mr. Min. Hello, teacher. Nice to see you as well. Okay, we've got not a bad group today. Excellent. There's probably one or two people joining us still, but we're going to begin. So take a look at this. How to talk about hobbies. Now let's try to go beyond the basics. I know you can talk about normal things. Let's see. Well, first, let's do it like this. I try to follow this structure. We learn for the first 10, 15 minutes, learn some words, or test your knowledge on some common words, talking about hobbies. Then we apply what we learn to a few exercises to get the new words into your memory. And we finish up with a speaking activity where you get to use it freely and let those new words mingle with your knowledge of English. Use it in a free, fluent way. So if it comes out of your mouth, it'll be there in your memory. At the very end, it's always good to do a little reflection. Normally, I run out of time, but I'll try to spend the last two minutes reflecting on what you learn so that you can group it in a meaningful way. These words go with this group, these words go with that group. Things like that help you retain the words in your long-term memory. And something else helps with your long-term memory. And Jose knows what that is. Jose, what's the secret of vocabulary learning? You have to, to write the, the words that, that you don't know in a piece of paper. <laughs> <laughs> a radical, a radical suggestion, Jose. Yeah. Who, who ever thought of that? That's amazing. <laughs> and uh, let's you have see if to, I have... To, to, to write the, the word in your own language and in English too. I think so. That's a great idea. I wish I had thought of that earlier. Thank you for telling us. Let me see if I have one. I think this is one I was using for Portuguese. 
Yeah, I think I have some Portuguese here. No, I don't have Portuguese. But anyway, you get the idea. Here I've got three columns. But if I had two columns, I would do exactly this. Later on, we can share ideas. I would do exactly this. I'd put English here, and I'd put my Portuguese on this side. I'd look at the English words. I try to actively recall the Portuguese because I still have to learn lots of Portuguese. I live in Portugal. And then by unfolding the paper, boom, I can see if I'm right, wrong, close, etc. Easy. Very easy. Okay. At the end of class, that's a good thing to do. During class, just watch, listen, speak, and learn. Let's get started. What do these pictures show? What are these pictures and what activities do they show? Each picture represents something. Mr. Alexei, look at that thing on the top left. What is that? Mm, it's a tube. It is not a tube. <laughs> not, uh, okay. there, there is an instrument called a tuba. There is an instrument called a tuba, tuba. but, but uh, that okay. is not it. That is not it. Mr. Mr. Lin, if it's not a tuba, what is it? Do you know? Uh, the thing on the top? Yeah, the thing on the top. What is that thing? Uh, yes, any kind of instrument. Uh, I think it's a saxophone. It is a saxophone. Excellent. Let's put these words in the chat window for you. Saxophone. And uh, what is a general name for tubas and saxophones? A general name for those things. A general name? Yeah. A tuba and a saxophone belong to a group of things which we call what? Instrument. Yeah. Musical. In Music. instruments. Yeah. In instrument. yeah. Good. So, we've got musical instruments. By the way, I know it looks like instruments, but when you're speaking quickly, it doesn't sound that way. Instru uh, 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 instruments. Instrument. 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 Yeah. It's better. So it looks yes. like a U, but it's not pronounced like a U. It's pronounced like an U. Uh. Instru instruments. Uh, instrument. Perfect, uh, perfect. Very nice. Thank you. And Mr. Mikkel. What is the musical instrument on the far right side? What is that? It's an uh, electrical guitar. Mm -hmm. Not an electrical guitar, it's but an electric, electric guitar. Electric guitar. Okay. Excellent. And what kind of guitar do you play, Miko? I don't play any you guitar. Don't no. play guitar? I, I know. I know very kind in music in general. No. Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! But wait a second. Uh -huh. If we look at your picture, you do do something in your free time. What do you do in your free time? Look at that picture, everyone. What uh, is that? I love cycling and I love traveling too. So the best way to 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 enjoy these two hobbies is. Uh, bike touring. So the, during the uh, the last 25 years, I, mm -hmm. it's, it's my my main hobby. Bike Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. So you got two good vocabulary words there for the group too. Cycling, or specifically, go cycling. I go cycling on the weekends. And then not go, but do a lot of bike touring. I do some bike touring. I've been doing bike touring, or I guess you could say do or go, for the last 25 years. And what's where were you touring in that picture, Mikael? It's, it's in my city, in San Sebastian. Oh, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> so what do, what do we see behind you on the rocks? What is that? Yeah, it's a, here in, in our city was born a famous artist called Chilida. At this Chilida. And Chilida, the, yes, and this is the, the maybe the most famous uh, art of this uh, artist. Uh, the uh, uh, in English how to is the name of this place is the the Combe 
of the winds or the winds comb or what the comb, the comb yeah. of the winds comb like you comb yeah. your hair that kind yes. of comb yes 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 comb of the winds okay yeah. very good I'm seeing I'm seeing a Wikipedia Eduardo Chilida is that Eduardo, right yeah, yes Eduardo Chilida yes this is the 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 artist excellent and since we're on the topic of art which can also be a hobby uh, what kind of art did Chilida do what was he famous for what kind of art I mean what do we call that kind of art the combs of the wind mm. begins with an uh, S with a, sorry, with an S. With an S. Not sure? Uh, a, a, sculpture, a, sculpture, a sculpture or... Very good, that's it. There it is in the chat window. Sculpture. A sculpture. That's it. A sculpture. That's okay. it. The, the T in sculpture sounds like a CH, like a CH, like sculpture. A sculpture. Okay. Very good, very good. You see, we learn something new every day. Today I learned about Eduardo Chilida and the comb of the winds. Excellent. By the way, for the rest of you, there's your Wikipedia link. To learn about Eduardo Chilida, you will be tested in the next class, everyone. Okay? Very if you cool. if you come here one day, I recommended you this this place. It's a very peaceful place. And I might just be there sooner than you think. <laughs> I've got a, I've got a, I need a break from Portugal, so maybe I'll go north. Okay. Very good, very good. Uh, let's see. Oh, let's go back here for a second. Now we've got musical instruments. Mr. Min, there's another category on this page. One of those pictures is a little hard to see, but two of the pictures I think you can see pretty well. What's the other category besides musical instruments? What kind of thing do you see? Um, the, the thing on the top. Yeah. It's a chess. Yeah, you see chess it's, pieces. Yes, it's different from the Chinese chess. Oh, really? How is it different? Um, Chinese mm, chess only had one king. Uh -huh. No had a queen, yeah. It doesn't have a queen? Yes. Careful, not no have, but doesn't have. It doesn't have a queen. Yes, it doesn't have a queen. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> What's the problem? <laughs> yes, uh, tell us, Min. It's hard to uh, explain, but. Uh, mm, Almost the, the, the chess on the table is the same in the, the, the chess, but it only don't have a, doesn't have a, a queen. Mm -hmm. well, while he's describing that, let's take a quick look at what it looks like. Uh, yes, I think I can explain this. Do, do explain. Uh, yes, because in the Asia, uh, when you have a fight in the um, in the in the history, we just in the fight we just have a general, we just have, uh -huh. have a general to fight, and you see and in the Europe and uh, yes, and you when you uh, have a fight you um, have to uh, discuss with uh, the queen or have a queen to um, take care of something. But in Asia, it just a general. And I see. So, general. so maybe. Calling it a king is a mistranslation. Maybe we should call it a general. Yes, general. Ah, ah, ah okay. So you mm. see, you see, Sabrina, it's not as sexist as you think. <laughs> yes, well, maybe uh, we just, Okay. <laughs> we just have a general uh, in, in the middle. Yeah. Uh, maybe in my, um, my opinion, simply because uh, in the Eastern. Um, we don't we um, don't have the, the, the queen that can take control of the country. Only had a king, yeah. Mm -hmm. woman, woman uh, not um, uh, allowed to uh, to take control of the country. Yeah. Yeah. Also. One, one queen from China from a long ago, but uh, she uh, didn't control so long. Yeah. 
So China, China had one queen. Historically speaking, yeah. there was one queen. Yeah. Only one can, uh, one queen uh, along uh, their history. Yeah. Well, it's time for another one, don't you think? And in Vietnam, <laughs> we uh, totally uh, haven't uh, got a, a queen. Yeah. For well, thousand years. 2015 is is it is the year to do it. Let's try. No, I think we've moved past kings and queens. But um, by the way, just curious, since we're on the topic of hobbies and Chinese chess, can a good Chinese speaker tell me how to pronounce Chinese chess in Chinese? Is it Xiang Chi? Is that right? Yes, you are right. It was just. Xiangqi. You can't play Xiangqi with me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe teacher, I can't teach you Chinese. You can't teach me English. <coughs> Excuse me. Yes. Well, I'm losing my voice. Hold on a second. I need to get a drink of water. One second. <coughs> drink some water. I'm trying. Hold on a second. <laughs> In Vietnam, we uh, also had a, a, a human chess. Yeah. It's uh, it's uh, the same like the, the Chinese chess, but uh, it power uh, very send one person. Uh, we we use the, uh, the human to play chess. Yeah. It, now, well, hold on a second. How do you how do you play that in your home? <laughs> oh, no, no, we don't play it in, 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 in home. home. Just, uh, Just, it happened in the festival. Uh -huh. Yes, yeah, only in the festival, yeah. It, uh, let's, see if we, let's see if we can get a quick picture of human chess. Let's see, it's going to take a second to load. Very interesting. So there's some human chess. We've got a picture there. Very interesting. And uh, uh, I wanted to zoom in on one picture. There we go. So is that what you're talking about? Uh, yes, yes. Mm, but uh, in the Chinese chess. Yeah. Oh, but OK. But this is, yeah, this is the, the European version. OK, so it's done in the Chinese, the Xiaoqi. <laughs> I hope I said that right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes, we have to start the Chinese lessons this weekend. This weekend, Xinyue. We have to we have to do a Chinese exchange. I started to learn. I started to learn Chinese and I just didn't have time to do it on my own. So but I would definitely love to learn. Absolutely. Uh, okay, very good, very good. So listen, let's come back to this discussion at the very, at, not at the very end, but in a few minutes. I want to go through some other vocabulary words as well. But I'm very interested to know more about these hobbies. Things that you do in other countries. I, I have never, I never knew that there was a real human chess <laughs> game festival or tournament. Never knew. I learn something new every day. So um, just a question. Uh, 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 uh. Look, you've got, um, you've got. Uh, hold on a second. Um, what was I going to say? Oh yeah, you've got chess. You've got what was the other thing, uh, Sabrina? In the far left side, you've got chess, and what's that other thing in the corner? Do you see it? Uh, so so. I think it's a card. It's a. Uh, mm -hmm. a, a, a what of cards? There's a, a name uh, for that, that group or packet. I believe, but I don't know <laughs> in English. Does uh, anyone know? No, I really never say this. One moment. Class, help her out. What do we call a group of uh, cards in a little packs. box? There packs. you go. Oh. <laughs> There's a there's a there's an even better word, Sabrina. We say a deck of cards. Um, okay. it, it's true. You can say pack, but I guess deck is a more 
is the, the right word. Pack is not okay. wrong, but deck is better. And I know you can't see very well, but in the middle, that is supposed to be Monopoly. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, you wait. What do we call games like Monopoly, Scrabble, those kind of things? Okay. Trivial Pursuit. This one is for Shinue. Do you know what we call that in general? Monopoly, Scrabble, Trivial Pursuit, Shoots and Ladders. Um, I don't know. Bad, bad luck. We call it what, Sabrina? Really? Table game. Table. Table, table games. games. Yeah. Table games. Ah, not table. Almost. Can I'll give you it. I'll give you a hint. The shape of the thing you play is a square, and it's made of kind of hard paper, not wood, but, but uh, if you know the name of the material, particularly in that shape, then you know what it is. I'll give you another hint. When you have to iron your clothing, you iron your clothing on a what? What's the thing that you put the clothing on? to iron it. Do you know? Mm, yeah, but I put the name that I know, it's a table too. I oh know. no, it's not table. It's not a table. Oh not my a God. table. <laughs> <laughs> I Anyone? like this name. <laughs> going once, going twice. The word is bored. bored. Ah, okay. So we'll call those board games. Be careful. Bored does not mean bored like uninterested. Bored means a flat square thing made out of board, which is like thick. Uh, it's not exactly paper. It's thicker than paper. Um, so bored does not equal bored. The two words there for you in the okay. chat window. I, I, I always think about bored in a... No, wow. <laughs> I don't know why. Board here, there's board as chateado, and there's board as quadro. So yeah, this, but is, yes. this is quadro, basically. And it's also the name of the material. It's made out of cardboard. Cardboard. That's the material. Okay, so we've got musical instruments, we've got board games and other kinds of games. That's a good start. We're not done yet. Now, I've got some other pictures, and also, we can start to group these into meaningful categories. Let's go around the room one more time, clockwise. Clockwise around the picture. Uh, let's see. Now, let's go counterclockwise. Let's go backwards. Mr. Shinwei, the picture on the top left can you name that thing? Tell me what you see, and then we'll try to figure out the activity. Top left, Shinyue. Shinyue? Oh, he went back to the river, I think. Uh oh, Mr. Shinyue. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. I'm sorry, I'm muted myself. I'm back. <laughs> what do you see on the top left side? Can you name that thing and then tell us what I, activity you think it describes or represents? I, I see, I see, I see, I see shoes. Yeah. I see bank banks. I see. I see. I see. Come here. That's right. So let's go back to the shoes. We don't call those shoes because they're a little bit, they go up higher on your foot than normal shoes. Boats. So it's, no? Boots is boots. right. Boots. So there's there's a pair of boots. Mm. There's a, I think, Shinyue, anyway, you've got the word right. There's a backpack. So, Shinyue, what activity do you think that represents? What can you do with those boots and that backpack? Hmm. 
And don't say, don't say Chinese chess. It's not Chinese chess. <laughs> bank banker. There you go. Backpacking is an activity. Backpacking. That's right. Mm. Alexi, do you ever go backpacking out there near Sochi? Mm. Uh, yes, I I did uh, mountain climb. Climbing, uh, I I went to Elbrus. Uh, it's the uh, highest mountain in Europe. Go climbing, go Cli climbing. The B is climbing. silent. Yeah, the B is silent. Climbing, climbing. Exactly. So you can go backpacking and you can go climbing. Uh, yes, so. uh, it's it's similar because it. It's also with uh, backpacks and uh, with tents. With tents. Do you see a tent on the screen? Uh, uh, oh. Uh, how to name it? Camping. Camping, yes. right. Okay. You can okay. go camping. And you can go camping using a tent, which is the object next to the backpack. You've got boots, backpack, tent, go climbing, go backpacking, go camping. Very good. And you said, Mikael, what is that? Elbrus? Uh, what? I don't he know. Said, what he, is that? He, sa he said that the, the, the name of the mon this mountain. So he, he, he went to the Elbrus. It's a very high, it's, I think that is the highest mountain in Europe, no? In Russia. Uh, yes, yes. It's in Europe. Uh, it, it is the highest mountain in uh, Europe. In, in, it's in Russia, yes. Oof. Highest peak, uh, uh, we uh, say. Uh, highest, highest peak. peak. Uh, okay. And how long does it take to get to uh, the top? Uh, it takes 10 days because uh we had to uh, accommodate uh to that that climate because there there are less of oxygen on a on a peak so you had to accommodate to well, maybe we should say um we had to uh uh we say accommodate, not accommodate. We had to acclimatize. We had to acclimatize. Yeah, yes, acclimatize. Um, maybe we could also say, in a simple way, get used to the lack of oxygen. And so that means you had to uh, you had to go slow, right, to get your body used to it. Uh, yes, it, uh, every day we, we got higher and higher for 500 meters or maybe for 700 meters day by day. There you go. And, uh, but what happens if there's bad weather? Because if it takes 10 days to climb, surely you can't get down very fast. Uh, I, I, I don't know what would happen if <laughs> it was a bad weather, because most of us were, on, were climbing first for the first time. Oh, my goodness. I guess you would find out. Right? <laughs> yes, yes. But uh, we did it in July, right? And and uh, in July, uh, the weather is usually fine on Elbrus. I can tell you from experience. I used to go. I used to go rock climbing, uh, mountain climbing actually. When I was a kid, a teenager, there are no mountains in New York City, so I had to stop. 
because I moved. But uh, I did it. And uh, I was up on the peak of a mountain in Washington State, and there was a thunderstorm. It's a really bad idea to be on top of a mountain in a thunderstorm, just so you know. Bad idea. You don't want to do it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and uh, we had to get down really, really fast. So the way we did it, we put a rope. I was like 17 years old, a long, long time ago, 150 years ago. And we had to put a rope down one of the cliffs. And we had to jump off the mountain with the rope to get down fast. It was, it was not so much fun. <laughs> we basically had to jump, and uh, uh, but we got down fast. And the problem is that if it's wet and lightning hits, then of course everything that's wet will be affected by the electricity. But that was a small mountain. It doesn't take. It doesn't take 10 days. It took maybe ah, three, four hours to get to the top. It wasn't so tall. So uh, that's why I wondered what you would do. There's other things you can do. You can stand on top of something. If the lightning hits and you're standing on top of insulation, then you're, you're, you're likely to be okay. You've got to stand on top of something that's neutral, like your backpack or something like that. And you'll, you might be okay if it doesn't hit near you. Very interesting though. And uh, let me see if we've got some other things here. So if you've been climbing, then you know what those things are. The third thing from clockwise, you've got the backpack, the tent, and Jose, the third thing on the top right side, especially for climbing, you've got that thing or those things. Do you know what they are? Yes, uh, a pair of a pair of uh, trainers or sneakers. Oh, okay. That's that's one one object too far. Yeah, you've got the the sneakers, yes. which is American English. Sneakers is U.S. English. Trainers is British English. Okay. And uh, what activity do you think it represents? The yes. Sneakers. Uh, with the sneakers, uh, you can uh, you could uh, run or climb a mountain. A mountain with sneakers? I don't think so. <laughs> ah, well, <with> sneakers, no. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, you can you can you can do hiking, hiking. Sure. You hiking, yeah, no. Hiking. It, it, it is possible to do hiking yeah. with uh, with uh, using sneakers, no? Yes. But we don't yes. we don't do hiking. We go hiking. We go okay. We go hiking. Right. And we go running. And, and we what do go we call running. it? What do we call it when it's not running but it's not walking? Faster than walking, but slower than running. Do you know what that is? I don't know. I Anyone? don't know. And uh, jogging. Go jogging. That's right. Yeah. So Notice how certain verbs go with certain activities. Go jogging, go running, go hiking. Okay? And uh, Mr. Lin, uh, uh, sneakers is a kind of tennis. We don't say tennis in English, though. Uh, that's like we would say that in Portuguese you say tennis and probably other Latin languages. But in English we say sneakers, American, trainers, British. Uh, Mr. Lin, what's that thing right in the middle of the page? What is that thing? In the middle. Yes. Uh, in the middle, I think it is uh, the gun. Maybe a shotgun. Shotgun. Yeah. Actually, it is a shotgun, but there's another name for it. If you're doing it as a sport, you don't use a shotgun for the sport. Do you know the other word for it? Oh, I, I, I have no idea. Help him out, class. What's the name of the gun we use for sporting? Uh, maybe a rifle. Exactly. A rifle. Like this. A rifle. a rifle. Okay. And what activity do you think we do, hobby, do you think we do with a rifle, Mr. Lin? 
uh, I think it's hunting. Yeah, you can go or do. Hunting. Go, uh, go hunting. I think. Go hunting. Perfect. You can go hunting. Guess what else you can do with a rifle? As uh, uh, as a as an activity. Yes, uh, actually, I don't know the name of the, the game, but I I can express it. You uh, use a gun, and uh, you have a machine. They uh, they they throw the kind of beast, and you you just shot a beast in the distance. Ah, right. Oh, right, 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 right. Yeah. So you can go shooting. Is I go shoot. is, a, is a general way, but the thing you're talking about is uh, is um, skeet. I think it's called skeet shooting. Let me just make sure I got the name right. Hold on a second. Yeah, this is it. Skeet shooting. It's spelled like one second. Put it here. So you can go skeet shooting. And that's a thing where you've got a clay, a clay. Um, I think they call it a, a clay duck or a clay bird, and it gets launched into the air, and you have to shoot it way up high. Uh, clay pigeon. No, no, it's not a, it's not a duck. <laughs> I got the wrong bird. Wrong bird. Like this. There's a clay pigeon gets launched in the air and you have to shoot a moving target and it's kind of like training for hunting but it's also a sport so skeet shooting is that what you were talking about Lynn? did I get the uh, right yeah. one? yeah yes, exactly. have you ever done that? have you ever gone uh, yeah. skeet shooting? no because in Vietnam we don't have a uh, dust game I've, yeah. I've, all, I've never seen it in real life I've only seen it in the movies. Yes. So, in the same with me. <laughs> I, I don't know if anyone actually does it, but I've seen it in movies. Um, Mr. Mikkel, on the bottom. Yeah. Go for it. Hey, uh, I'm not the sure. I'm not the rule about over the ropes. Say it one more time. I didn't catch it. One more time. Uh, uh, just now, you are talking about uh, climb mountains. Right, right, uh, right. Yes, yes. There are two rules in the picture. I love the ropes, but uh, I'm not sure the other two. Oh, the other two. Um, the one on the top right side. Hmm. Is that it on the top right? Yes, yes. On the top right side. Mm. Uh, one is ropes, and uh, wa what's the other one? The other one is an axe or a pickaxe. Mm. Specifically, an axe. By the way, if you go climbing, don't ever bring an axe, it's just not used. Because in the old days, they used to use these. But what happened was, when the sport got popular, people started to destroy the mountain so that other climbers wouldn't be able to climb because the axe would break the rocks. So they're not used anymore, basically, unless you're on ice. But that is an axe. Uh, I think nowadays we have other equipment. And I can tell you what the equipment is called, but it's very particular. I don't know if you need to know it. But definitely, you've got the rope. Uh, you've got things. You've got special harnesses. Harnesses. I don't have a picture of this. But a harness is a belt that goes around your body that allows you to connect to the rope in a really easy way. And they use harnesses and ropes. They don't use axes anymore. But anyway, that's it. So we got boots, backpack, tent, rope, axe, sneakers or trainers, rifle, go shooting, go skeet shooting, go camping, go hiking, go jogging, go running, go climbing, go backpacking. So far, so good. Now, Mr. Mikkel, what's on the bottom left side? I don't know if you can see that image. It's a little hard to see. I think that there are some stamps. 
They are stamps. What hobby do you think that represents? I don't know the name. Maybe it could be collecting stamps or something like that. It is. Stamp collecting. Stamp collecting. Stamp collecting. Very okay. good. And Sabrina, what about those things in the middle, the bottom middle? Coins. <laughs> yes. So, don't say people collect money. <laughs> but no, what's, no. The, what's the activity? Do you know? Uh, maybe coins collecting, like stamp. Coin collecting. Mm -hmm. Not coins, but coin. Okay. Coin. By the way, that's a great, very quick English lesson. Good lesson here. When you have a word like collecting, the word that precedes it, coin, is actually an adjective, not a noun. So it can never be plural. You can never say... Um, okay. Just like you could say fun collecting or you're, you're actually describing the activity of collecting so it becomes an adjective. And adjectives in English cannot be plural. That's why we say coin collecting and not coins collecting. And even better, we might say rare coin collecting because you're going to collect things that are unusual or valuable. Do you collect things, Sabrina? Uh, I used to collect stamps, but nowadays I don't do this anymore. Did you have a big collection? Yes, from uh, other countries and it, it was very beautiful for me. <laughs> there is because a... Go ahead, yeah. Sorry, I, my dream is uh, was go to the other countries to know other culture. So because this I I uh, um, was this. I'll show you the I, I, most expensive stamp ever. <laughs> most, let me show you. Let me second. Like, give me a second here. Do you know? Do you know how much the most expensive stamp in the world costs? Want to take no. a guess? No, maybe <laughs> one million. <laughs> I don't something, know. something like that. Let me see if I can get you a picture of it. Give me just a second if I can do this. I know what it looks like, uh, but I, I don't know the name of it. So I'm going to see if I can just Google for it. It, it was a picture of an airplane. Wow. And it was it was so rare uh, that it was a collector's item because there was only like two of them ever made. Uh, whoops. Stamp. Stamp. My, my computer is a little bit slow. In the world. Uh, and I think it's a... Oh, here it is. Yeah, you can see it. Oh, that was it. Hold on. Yeah, <laughs> we just had it on screen. I'll show you. Uh, it's this one here. Wow. Let me show you a picture. Uh, this is so slow. Sorry about that. Do you know why it's so expensive? Uh, yes, I do. Let me see. Uh, you, you really can't see it, actually. Okay, there you go. 24 cent stamp. Before I tell you why, can you see what is unusual about the plane? Maybe it's a little bit hard to see. It's difficult to say, but they are <laughs> they using yeah. in contrary. Yeah. yeah, not contrary. Upside down. Upside down. Thank upside you. Upside down. Upside down. It was the most. From I, I, this is from when I was a kid. I, I might be wrong, but from what I remember, it would cost twenty-four cents. But there was a printing error, and something like only two of them were ever printed, or something like that. It was a printing error. So, it sold at the time for like ten thousand dollars at the time, and nowadays that would be like you know, a hundred thousand or more. I don't know. It's because there was only two of them ever printed, uh, mm -hmm. and they, they went out. In, in fact, if we uh, let's see if we can get a link to it. Did they print incorrectly? Yeah, they printed it incorrectly. Okay. 
Let's see if we can get a link. I'm just remembering this from when I was a kid. <laughs> and uh, I guess I'm a good week because uh, here it is. The inverted Jenny, known as the upside down Jenny or the Jenny invert, printed May 10th, 1918. That is it. Let's see if we can see the price. Uh, between January and September 2014, it was auctioned for 126000 through one half a million dollars. That's how much it costs today. Half a million dollars. Mm -hmm. So, where did you put your stamp collection, Sabrina? Do you still have it? No, I uh, give for other stamp collections. You, you, gave, you gave it away? Yes. You gave it away. You sold it or you gave it away? Gave it, it away. Oh, my God. Did you have an inverted Jenny in the collection? No, it's not. It's not expensive. It's only uh, my hobby. It's only this. It's fun because I, in this time, I, I asked everybody, "Oh, you have some stamp? Give to me." So it's a, a kid uh, hobby. There you kid go. Hobby. There you go. So you get to travel through the world virtually, but now you yes. have verb. Now you have verb. You can see the world every hour. <laughs> mm -hmm. Today you're in today you're in Portugal with me, and you're in Hong Kong with Xin Yue. <laughs> what about that thing, uh, Mr. Xin Yue? What about that thing on the bottom left? What do you think that thing is on the bottom left? Well, it's a group of things, I should say. What are what are those? What is that group of things, and what do you think it represents? Utensils. Utensils. Well, could be. The clock is not a utensil, though. Mm. <laughs> and hey. what do you think makes them unique? Why would we want to collect those things? What do you think that represents? Uh, mm, mm, mm. Uh, Chenlong we are, or porcelain, porcelain, porcelain. Uh. Porcelain. Let's see if I can spell it correctly. One second. Porcelain, porcelain. That's it, porcelain. Well, I don't know if they're only porcelain, but I can see what you mean. Something that is good quality material that people might collect. Porcelain, marble, these things that are maybe limited supplies, like marble. Once you mine all the marble, it's gone. Gold, diamond, those precious things. Okay, could be. Anyone else have another idea? What do you think that group of things? Furniture articles? Mm -hmm. More specific. Old. Yes. Huh? What? Old furniture. Old. Yeah, not old, but we have a special word. Not old. Begins with an A. Ancient. Um, not ancient. Hair. Again, I got it. That's it. Hair. Ancient. No, no. Someone else said it. the word. Quiet. Hair. Antiques is right. Uh. Antiques. Oh. Antiques. That's right. So, antique. Antique. Collecting is, is what I have in the corner there. Antiques. It means they're old. The first computer ever made was something like, uh, something like over a thousand years old. It was a mechanical calculator. There's, there's amazing, intricate machines. Uh, not just museum pieces, but also antiques, things that people use. Uh, I think about mechanical things, but it could be porcelain ware, like you said. It could be uh, things you use at the table. Whatever. Collecting antiques is another hobby. Well, uh, let's, let's do this. Which verbs go with these hobbies? We've already mentioned this a bit with go and do. So, Alexei, that thing on the left, what is it? And what verb do you think goes with the hobby? 
What is it, and what verb is the right verb? So first, what is that kind of machine? Do you know what that is? Uh, I, I don't know uh, how to say it in English. Uh, it's, it. it's for clothing. It is. Clothing. It is. Now, what kind of hobby could you do with that machine? What do you think, Alexei? What kind of hobby could you do in your free time with that machine? Mm. Making clo clothing. I, I agree. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Making your own clothes. Seems like a hobby that you might do with that machine. Jose, what do we call that machine, by the way? Uh, Lynn has the right verb. <laughs> what do we call the machine itself? Machine is called uh, sewing machine. Sewing machine. Sewing machine is right. She show with machine. Show with machine. Sewing, sewing machine. Excellent. Okay. What do you What do you have in the middle, Jose? That's in the easy. middle, uh, photograph camera. 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 What's the hobby? Take uh, take pictures. Taking pictures, yeah. Taking pictures. Taking pictures. Another name for the hobby, Lynn? Uh, the hobby of taking pictures, another name would be? Taking photos. Taking photos, another name? Photography, in general. Photography. Photography. Yeah, you got to get that ah sound. Photography. That's it. That's it. And Mr. Lin, I didn't hear you that time, so I'm going to ask you about the things on the right side. Oh, actually, I, I can't see it correctly. I, I, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's it for technician. Right. Not, not exactly a technician. Not exactly. But, but something along those lines. You're close. Mikhail, what would you say about the things on the right? I don't know that the exact that the word is something to uh, do you it yourself or something like that. Exactly, that's actually what I was looking for. We call it DIY, do it yourself, do it yourself hobbies. DIY. Uh, and and what, excellent, excellent. So it's DIY. Now, Sabrina, what kind of DIY stuff could people do? You can look at those pictures as a clue or talk about your own experience. What is a DIY hobby? Uh, it's possible to fix some parts of the house. Okay, yeah. Doing your own renovations. Yes. Doing your own Kitchen, renovations. Bath. That's right. Excellent. We, we, you could say uh, doing, we've got a good expression, doing a fixer. Fixer-upper. <laughs> Fixer-upper Fixer is usually a house that you bought cheaply because it needs repairs. Doing a fixer-upper. But it also is for people who like a kind of DIY approach. So you could do your own renovations. Shinui, can you think of another DIY hobby or DIY activity besides renovations? Hey, build a house. You learn a lot of wood. wood. Exactly. Building your own house. Right. Make it, maybe making a log cabin like President mm. Abraham Lincoln used to live in. A log <laughs> cabin. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. Hey, I, I have seen a movie called uh, uh, Lincoln. But uh, th this movie is uh, a scary, scary movie. Oh, right. Lincoln the Vampire Killer. Yes, yes. Yes, 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 yes. That is the true story, by the way. Be afraid. Uh, Be very afraid. <laughs> Listen, everyone. We're, we're at the end of the hour. I have to start the business class. 
But here's what I'm going to do. On the rest of that uh, presentation, you have some good short uh, activities, uh, exercises you can do with the answers or suggested answers on the last page. Try it out. See how many you get right. Send me your questions through the message window, and I'll be happy to help you out if you have any questions. Speaking skills class will be next back next Tuesday. Stick around for the business class. We're going to be doing a very interesting business class all about key expressions for convincing people that the service or system you want for the business is the right one. Coming up in just a minute. Bye for now, everyone. See you soon. Okay, bye-bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. See you.